Okay, we're recording. This is awesome. Well, I just want to welcome everyone to our our first book club, really. I, I, I don't know what else to call it, but I'm just excited that we have this time set aside to meet together for the next six weeks at noon Eastern Standard about this amazing book called Chase the Lion. And I don't know about all of you, but the minute I picked it up, I devoured the first three chapters and it was so tempting not to go beyond that, but I was really wanting to stay, you know, intentional with these first three chapters so we could unpack them in our time together today. And Mary Beth, I couldn't be any more excited to have you leading this for this first series. And uh, so just for all of you who may not know, Mary Beth Dodd is, our, is, is the beast of the Southeast. She's our field regional out in our Southeast, uh, Southeast region. And actually, she'll be working with lots of teams in lots of regions, especially as we're putting this group together. But I thought no better way than for her to jump on and teach us, help us develop our minds. And, and just I'm really excited, Mary Beth, for how this is going to help each one of us to break through those ceilings that we've got for ourselves. Sky's the limit in this business. There is no ceilings. And your work ethic can write your paycheck. But first, you got to get your mind right. And I find a lot of times... The battles are won or lost in the mind before they've ever even begun. And what a great book you've chosen, Mary, to help us do that. Yay. Oh, I'm so excited about it. Cami. thanks for letting me do it. Um, you guys, this book is, um, I'm sure you've already figured it out if you're reading it, but it's just unique. It's got some stuff and some ways that he just even describes the same concept we've maybe heard other places that's just really, um, really different. And so I know you guys probably had a chance to figure most of you to dive into this. Um, and I want to tell you one of the things that I missed when I first read this book was that manifesto at the very beginning. And so I want to just start with that because I feel like it's the beginning of this book, um, but it's also our end goal for this book and for this series. When we get to the end, I want us to be able to say that, yes, this is our mantra. Um, and so this is the Lion Chasers Manifesto, and it's right even before chapter one. And I think when I first read it, I just kind of skipped over it thinking, oh, it's probably just a foreword or it's just some comments, but it's really powerful. And so I'm just going to read it to you real quick. And it goes like this. Quit living as if the purpose of life is to arrive safely at death. Run to the roar. Set God-sized goals. Pursue God-given passions. Go after a dream that is destined to fail without divine intervention. Stop pointing out problems, become part of the solution. Stop repeating the past, start creating the future. Face your fears, fight for your dreams. Grab opportunity by the main and don't let go. Live like today is the first day and the last day of your life. Burn sinful bridges, blaze new trails, live for the applause of nail scarred hands. Don't let what's wrong with you keep you from worshiping what's right with God. Dare to fail, dare to be different, quit holding out, quit holding back, quit running away, chase the lion. And I love this, you guys. I think this is something that we can all like print out and maybe throughout this series at least stick it somewhere where you can see it on a regular basis to encourage yourself to push harder, to go, go farther. When you're having a day where you just feel like sitting around in your house and you don't want to chase dreams and you don't want to you know, have the discipline to do the things that are going to get you where you want to be. Um, I think that this is a great encouragement and a great reminder. So the whole premise of this book, you guys, is based on this little tiny scripture um, that is found in the Bible in Samuel. And it's, here's kind of the snippet of it. There was also Benaiah, son of Jehoda. <laughs> I don't know how to say that right. A valiant warrior from Kabzeel. He did many heroic deeds, deeds which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. And what's crazy, you guys, is if I was reading this scripture, I probably would have skipped right. I'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, like, what's next? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And I love how Mark Batterson just zooms into this one scripture, and he sort of peels it apart. And if you guys haven't figured it out yet, he wrote a book 10 years ago called in a pit with a lion on a snowy day, right? This book is sort of the sequel, um, but it's also a standalone book. And this one is just absolutely, um, I think it takes it to a whole nother level, as we say. But I love how he took this little phrase that, that he was in, um, you know, he went after this lion, that he chased it into the pit. Maybe he could have ignored it. He could have walked away. Um, but, oh, cool. Deb said she read the first one. Um, but instead he went after it, that very thing that was so scary, that impossible task, that thing that there's no way a human could have done on his own. Um, 
merit, he went in and he got after it and he killed a lion in that pit. And so it's just such a picture of what we can do um, with the help of God and the kind of dreams and the kind of goals and things that we need to be chasing after. Um, there's so much meat, you guys, in these first three chapters that really I'm just going to highlight a couple things and I'm going to ask you guys to interact with me through the chat. I think that's going to be the easiest way with so many of us being on here. Um, but I love how he says, if your dream doesn't scare you, it's too small. If it doesn't scare you, it's too small. And I want to ask you guys in the chat, would you please tell me what is it that scares you? What dream scares you that you're scared to even type in here, but I'm going to ask you for this series to be vulnerable, be vulnerable with yourself, be vulnerable with the other people on this and get some accountability by just putting it out there. Okay. Not reaching diamond failure, going diamond in a month, quitting full-time job, scared of what people think, scared of succeed, succeeding, rejection, um, failing with your family. Wow, you guys, not being a good enough leader, staying balanced, lots of failure. I'm seeing lots of people being scared of failure. Went back to their nine to five. Scared of success again. Not being a good enough mom. I can understand that. Blitzing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. It's scary, isn't it, you guys? Um, it can be so scary going after a dream like this. And some of you on this call, maybe you've gone hardcore after a dream already. Maybe you're living in your dream and it looks like some of you are that. You're living in your dream. You're doing what you set out to do, but now you're scared you're going to lose it, right? Is it too good to be true? Um, is it something that is temporary? Oh, yeah, going black diamond, that is scary. Losing your marriage and family in the process of going after a dream, that's huge too. And I want you guys to know as we, as we do these, these weeks and these chats on here and we're going through this book, I really want us to be focusing on three things. This is not just about your business. You know, this is not just going to be a, a call to action on your business each week, um, even though we're going to have some of that. But I want us to also be thinking about the dreams that you have in your personal life for you and your family, those that are close to you, and in your spiritual life as well. So those three things are kind of going to be, you know, I'm going to ask you each week um, to look at those three things as we go throughout this process and make sure that we've got um, our eyes on all of those things that are so important. Okay. All right. I want to jump over to, thank you guys so much for sharing those and they're coming in so fast. I'm going to go back and look at those later because I kind of want to see some of the things that you guys are, are facing. Um, but I want to look at the concept that he talked about, um, about, his theory, first of all, that your favorite scripture will become the script of your life. Um, and then he kind of goes into this concept of a dream within a dream within a dream. And I want you guys to ask yourself, and maybe you already did as you were reading, but what are those themes in your life? What is, is there a verse? Is there a phrase? Is there a quote? Um, is there just a concept that keeps coming up in your life over and over and over? And I want to give you an example of that in my life. Okay. So he talks about his, you know, this is his favorite scripture, this scripture about Benaiah chasing the lion. And it really impacted him at the age, I think, of 19 um, when a pastor was, um, was speaking on this verse. It pulled it out of scripture for him. And then his whole life has really kind of revolved around, you know, writing about it and, and the concept of chasing those dreams. And he's led so many people through this process, you guys, just thousands of people, um, which is amazing. And they've, you know, if you've read his book, The Circle Maker, um, you will see even more of kind of, I love it. You guys already get your scriptures out there. Um, even more of how God answered promise after promise after dream after crazy, insane dream in the life of their church and in their family and that kind of thing. But, um, I wanted to share with you guys when I first, um, started my business with it works, it was a big stretch for me. So I was coming from ministry. Um, I'd been in ministry for probably about 10 years by that point, full time as a worship pastor. Um, and, the idea of starting a business was really scary for me. It was scary to think about pulling back at all from ministry. It was scary to think about all the stuff you guys are talking about. Failure. Can I get to the level I want to get to? Can I support my family with this? All of those things were really scary for me. And the verse that God brought to my attention was Ephesians 3.20. 
and it is now to him who's able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And so it stood out to me. I named my team immeasurably more. Um, and I, I, God kept bringing this verse to me over and over and over. So I would be in the weirdest places. I mean, I was at a, a, an awards show one time and the guy went up to receive the award and he goes, I don't know why, but for some reason, I feel like I'm supposed to say this verse right now. That was the verse he said. And then I would be in a church service and they would say it again. Like it just kept happening to me over and over and over. And when I read this book, what was crazy is um, it made me think about the fact that I had a pastor growing up and he was probably only our pastor for maybe two or three years, but he closed every single sermon with that same verse. That was kind of his like closing, his benediction or whatever you want to call it. Um, he would always close with that verse. Um, God is able to do immeasurably more than you can ask or dream um, in your life. And I feel like it's cool way to close things because it covers so many topics, right? You can, you can apply it to anything, but that was what God did in my life. And when I read his concept of a dream within a dream within a dream and this idea of legacy and that, you know, that God is bu building this bigger picture with your life and it's in phases, you know, like it's not just a little snapshot, but if you zoom out and you look at your life as a whole, that it's this series of events. It's these things that, you know, sometimes in the business, we call it dripping on people, right? If, we're, if we want um, somebody to watch our social media and we might have a picture with green sort of in the background subtly, or, you know, we might um, mention how much we enjoy working from home. So not all of our posts, not all of the things we do as we talk about our business are really like obvious. Sometimes it's just a little drip. And that's the same thing I think God does in our lives. Um, maybe with these life verses and, um, you know, just things that, that he's imparting to us little by little. Um, and so I think that that concept is so insane and so crazy. And it made me laugh that my life verse, Ephesians 3.20, is he like mentioned it like three or four times after he started talking about his life verse, you know, and it was confirmation for me. I'm like, oh yeah, that's exactly what God's doing in my life, has done in my life. And it really, it got so obvious over the last five years that sometimes if I ever heard that verse, I knew, okay, God's trying to get my attention, you know? So what about you guys? Some of you are, um, oh, it's Ephesians 3.20, Dave, if that's the verse you're asking for. Um, but you guys are putting your verses out there. Are these, the, are these the life verses? Do you feel like you've put them out there, which I love, and I'm going to go back and look, but do you feel like you can see that theme in your life? from whatever your verse is, are you seeing that come up? Is it coming up more than once? You know, um, it's kind of like when you get a new yellow car and all of a sudden you realize there's so many yellow cars out there that you had no idea about, you know, but same thing. It's like God does drip on us and he's, he's pushing us and he's encouraging us. Um, the next concept I want to talk about on page eight is Oh my gosh. And this, this blew my mind. I remember when I read this the first time I've read this book multiple times now, but, um, I was so blown away by this idea. You guys on page eight, he talks about what impossibility do you need to repent of? It's not just our sin that we need to repent of. It's our small dreams. If your dream doesn't scare you, it's too small. If it falls short of God's glory by not giving him an opportunity to show up and show off his power, it's too small. And so he says, this book is a call to repentance. Repent of your small dreams and your small God. Dare to go after a dream that is bigger than you are. So we talked about this stuff that, sca that scares us, right, um, a little bit earlier. And I just, I want you guys to think about not just what scares you, but what are the ways you can stretch yourself a little bit? If you're scared of, of getting to diamond, maybe you need to stretch your goal a little farther and say, you know what? I'm scared of diamond, but what I really want is triple diamond. And I never told anybody that before because I was so scared that I just said diamond, but maybe I really want triple diamond, you know, and I need to go ahead and chase that lion, chase something that's bigger. It has to be something that you can't accomplish on your own in order to fit in the God sized dream sort of box, you know? Imagination is God's gift to you. A dream is your gift back to God. What do you guys think about that? And I love all your comments. 
to actually think that us dreaming big and wanting big things for our lives is a way to honor God is a way to, um, you know, give a gift to him. That is a crazy, awesome concept. You know, in that mantra in the beginning, it says, stop living life so that you can arrive safely at death. And I think that that's exactly what this is about. This is about us pushing, um, pushing farther and yeah, powerful. I love your comments, you guys. Everything you're quoting is the stuff I wrote down. That's another one of those things, right? Where God just keeps dripping and dripping. Oh my gosh, I love it. So, you know, as, as we're thinking about, about these dreams, about these things, these like, you know, push goal, however you want to think of it. I also want you guys to think about, um, you know, he talks even going in chapter two, chapter three, he's starting to move us down this storyline of looking at the story of your life. You know, and it made me think about so many times we're so focused on what's right here. We're focused on our day and what's going wrong with our day and um, what's going wrong with our business or what's going wrong in our marriage or our relationships or, you know, the things that are right here that are um, just, I have two people raising hands. Who's raising their hand? Let me see. Um, I don't want to miss something if somebody has a great comment they want to shout out, but maybe it went away. Okay. Um, so if we just think of our lives in those small terms, we're forgetting to, um, to think of our life in light of the big picture, right? So if God is writing a story, this huge giant story and your life is part of it and you're weaved within it, right? With the other people's stories that are around you, the other things, can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> there you are. Um, and think of, think of that story too. Think of it in light of those three things that I mentioned earlier. Think of your story in light of your business, but think of your story in light of your personal life. You know, somebody mentioned earlier being scared that they would run so hard after success that their personal life would suffer. And I know, especially if you're a more, um, you know, D personality, a red personality, that can definitely be, um, that can be a fear and, and some other personalities as well. Um, Oh, good. I'm back. I must've froze up for a second. Sorry about that. You guys. Um, so be thinking about, about that story in those realms. Also your spiritual life. Where are you spiritually? Do you feel like you have growth to do? Do you feel like you're taking? Hey guys, I took the host back because she keeps freezing up and I don't know if she knows she's doing that. Um, can you hear me? Okay. All right, cool. I see it, Chad. Awesome. Hopefully she'll be back here in a minute. Um, I'm going to keep going with this a little bit because we'll see if we can get her to you just, don't you love technology when it works and it's a little bit tricky when it doesn't. Okay. Mary, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh my you goodness. kept freezing up. So I, I retook over the host thing just so that we could recover when you were Perfect. frozen. Thank you. You're welcome. You're good to go. Okay, what did you hear me say? We, you froze out. For like forever? No, but you had froze out for a little bit. You came back for a few seconds, then you froze out again. Oh, so, sorry, you guys. That's okay. <laughs> so I, I want us to think about our stories um, in light of the big picture. I think that's kind of where I left off. So if you think of God is growing this, this big story, right, this big picture, and your life gets to be a part of it. Your life is woven in and out of this story. and so. As we think of that, you know, we use stories every day, right? In our It Works business. When we sit down and we, we talk through the party pad with somebody or we sit across somebody um, and have coffee. Um, we do a party. We do a one team, one mission. Um, we are telling our story and our story as it relates to It Works Global, you know? Um, and I think as we're thinking about these big God-sized dreams, about pushing ourselves a little bit farther, um, we've got to think of it in light of those, those three things that I mentioned earlier, and that's our personal life, our relationships, right? The things that are, are going well, the things we want to keep going well. And someone mentioned earlier in the chat um, that they were scared that if they chased so hard after success that they would lose relationships and hurt personal life, right? So personal life, um, our business, obviously, we're going to be talking about that each and every week. And that's something we want to be evaluating as we're looking at chasing these lions and going after something bigger, 
Um, and then also our spiritual lives. So, um, you know, where are you at spiritually? Do you feel like you're taking time, um, to spend time with the Lord? Are you going to worship on a regular basis? Um, are you putting that as a priority or is it the last priority in your life? I know for me, one of the things that has drastically changed in my life and my husband's life since January was we decided, you know what? Our lives are insane and busy. I've got four little boys. Um, you know, we both work, we both work and do ministry stuff too. And, um, we got to the point where we were like, you know what? We're going to start something new this year. We're going to get up early every single day. We're going to make, set our alarms for 6am every day. And we're going to get up and we're going to sit quietly and we're going to read something that we, that is going to allow God to start that dripping process on us, right? For the day, get our mind right from the beginning of the day. And I don't mean that at all in a, a legalistic standpoint. Um, but I just mean it in a kind of a first fruit standpoint, like what, where are you starting your day? You know, what are you focusing on? And for us, that's been a game changer. Um, so that's been amazing. But just those three things, as you're thinking about your life, don't just think about the small picture about what's weighing on you today, but think about your big story, you know, and how those three things are going to be affected, um, in and through that story. Um, I know we don't have a lot of time, you guys, but I want to touch on a couple other things really quick because I want you thinking about them. Um, page 13, he talks about this concept that has not left my mind since I read this probably six months ago. And that is, um, the idea of long obedience in the same direction. Um, so he's, he's talks a lot in this book and I hope if you haven't read it, read it. These first couple chapters are amazing how he weaves this story throughout, but, um, his father-in-law that pastored a church for 31 years, the same church, and that it's his life goal to pastor a church forever, you know, from the beginning of ministry pretty much until retirement. And so, um, he talks about, he had a front row seat to watch long obedience in the same direction. And he said, I saw what God could do if you plant yourself in one place and let your roots grow deep. And I could not help but think about our business when I, when I thought through this. You know, we want to have these things in our life as well in all the other areas, but specifically in our business. Um, you know how, how far we can get, how good we can get, how strong we can get in leadership when we plant ourselves somewhere that makes sense which we all happen to have access to, right? With it works global because it is a strong company. It is debt free. It's, you know, got such a strong foundation. Um, they're constantly working to provide us tools and products and things that are going to make us successful in our businesses and allow us to help other people to bring success. And that's what I want you guys to, to think about as you think of this, this concept that if you have long obedience in the same direction with your business, that you're going to see a whole lot of success. If you're consistent when you're blitzing, you're consistent um, telling your story of your business to people on a regular basis through one-on-ones. If you're in parties and online parties and all the ways that we build, if you're consistent in wrapping people, um, imagine what the payoff is going to be long-term, you know, in your business um, as you continue to do that. I love you guys' comments. I keep seeing them. I'm going to have to go back and keep reading through. But I love, love, love that. So page 13, just put a big old circle on that. Um, and, and look at that. When you start to think about your business and you start to think about, you know what, sometimes it's, it's tough and things get hard. And, you know, maybe it would be easier to just go do something different or, you know, all the things that we go through. It doesn't matter what you're pursuing. Everybody has those kind of thoughts. Everybody has days where they doubt themselves or they doubt their situation. And so I, just, I want to say, you guys do that long obedience in the same direction. Stick with something. Maybe you're somebody that, maybe this has been your third or fourth business endeavor and nothing felt like it really stuck with you. Let this be the one. Let this be the thing where you have that long obedience um, in the same direction. So, you know, back to the story concept, you guys, I think um, we're all writing that story. And even if you, you're not doing it intentionally, you're writing a story with your life. And so we've got to figure out the ways that we want to make that story the best that we can. Um, we got to learn how to tell it and we've got to learn how to tell it well. Um, you know, your story is going to be greater than you. Um, and some of us would like to think that it's not, we want to live in our small world and not be so challenged or not feel like we're so out there. Um, but in reality, it is still part of it. Um, and we've got to think of it that way. We think of our stories in light of, um, our stories with our business, goes all the way back to Mark starting the business originally, you know, it goes all the way back to him starting in network marketing in the first place. And, um, it makes me think too, and Cammy, feel free to jump in here. But, um, my dad did network marketing with Mark back in the day, um, with his first company. 
and was a runner on his team. And it was just funny to be in our venue in Grand Rapids this past weekend because my dad had told me, I remember Mark talking on that stage and telling stories about him, about my dad, you know? And it's like, even for me, I look back at, at the idea of network marketing and I think this started a long time ago, you know, for me and for Cami. Like this is something that was, um, that was built into a long time ago and we're continuing to carry on that legacy and be able to just, um, build into what God started so long ago and everything is just so intertwined, all of it. He's writing this intricate story with our lives and we get to be kind of on the front row seat, but we also get a spot to drive sometimes, you know? Um, Cammie, you want to throw anything in there? Yeah, I have a couple things, but I've got a Frenchie problem. They're all circling around my feet. Um, <laughs> I have a couple things. I love that you mentioned that about our, our families and starting earlier. And I was thinking some of you are on there going, okay, yes, Cammie, your dad and mom were in network marketing start. Someone might say that to Kay. And I know Don's had their daughter involved now. And so that's already starting to happen, but it didn't have to start before you. You can decide you're planning your roots and you're changing your legacy for your family. And what I love about that is it can be in it works and outside of it works. What are some other things you want your family to stand for that you want to have a long line of obedience? You know, I, I look at that and I think my dad started this dreaming thing, right? My kids aren't going to know any other way in life other than that they were born to be dreamers. And what I want to say to many of you today is I've heard from one too many mouths saying, oh, I'm not the dreamer. I'm not the visionary in our family. Well, as a matter of fact, you are because God has given you dreams and he's given things to you and you alone that only you can. And, and his will is going to happen with or without us, but he is giving us the opportunity to be a part of that plan. And I believe that even if we get off track a little bit, we can get right back on track. That's, that's, you know, it's not like fear of missing out forever. It's just, um, Lord, you know, this is a prayer. I pray so often, Lord, keep me in the center of your will. Mm -hmm. Keep me in the center of your will so that when I start to jog outside of it, I get right back in it, you know? And I got to tell you, there's just a couple things that I thought, I mean, just blew my mind. The first one being, we're all dreamers. I just had that conversation last week with, with a triple diamond, her saying, I'm just not a dreamer. Yes, you are. And do not declare that over your life. Um, and when God gives you something in your heart that you're just fired up about, that's a dream. You know, from a very young age, I wanted to teach and coach. I believe there's a reason for that. I thought it was going to be in a traditional setting. You know, I love basketball. For whatever reason, I had my head injury and I couldn't, I couldn't continue that path of what I thought would be a basketball career. Instead, I turned it into coaching in a gymnasium. And then lo and behold, the Lord brings it into coaching and it works. And it's that dream within a dream within a dream that has gone long before me, but it's going to go so far past me too, you know? And um, when you said, what are your fears? You know, I think my fear was get my, getting my hopes up, right? Getting my hopes up and it not happening, being bold, putting it out there and not meeting that goal. But you know, what's worse, what's worse than, than putting it out there and not having it happen, getting your expectations up and not meeting them is not having one at all. And when you think about the size of your dreams dictates the size, it determines the size of your God. It's kind of like where your money is. That's where your heart is. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what I think about with your dreaming. So your dreams are showing others what you believe your God is capable of. And I think there, there, there are times of discouragement. There really are, but you can choose to manage that, those failures and those disappointments to lead you to success to learn those life lessons. I already, some of my, you know, I'll just, I'll just put it out there. The, the year that I lost number one, I was crushed. I was crushed. My identity was more wrapped up in number one than I realized. And I thought to myself, why did you let that happen? You know, already in this new role, it's, it served me so well. I would never be able to relate with some of you that really get challenged with the number issue, you know, let your number drive you, but not define you. I wouldn't be able to relate with that. I wouldn't be able to connect with some of you in that area because that had not been something I'd experienced. And I already see how God is using that, that, that discouraging season in my life. Number one, to teach me that he's my identity, but also multiple other reasons being that now I can connect with so many of you that don't even realize you're doing that because we're all so, you know, God made us that way. Don't, don't get discouraged that he made you that way. I used to get on myself all the time. I love the person that put out there, is it going to ruin my marriage and going to affect my kids? It will, it will. But you know what? God's going to use that to draw 
them closer to him. He's going to use that to teach you tough lessons too. And guess what? He's going to use that to drive their dream moving forward, right? Um, he gave you to them for a purpose. He knew what your, your faults were and he knew what your gifts were. And so don't hide behind what ifs. You will never regret what you try. You'll only regret what you don't try. I believe that wholeheartedly. And so um, the, one of the quotes in the Bible or in the book that was really standing out to me, mismanaged success is a leading cause of failure and the well-managed failure is the leading cause of success. And I love that because lately I've been all stuck on Michael Jordan and the fact that he holds the record for making the most basketball shots, you know, in the NBA. And then I think he also holds the record for missing the most shots, but nobody ever talks about that, right? He's only remembered for that good. And that to me is well-managed failure. And he didn't stop taking shots. He didn't stop taking shots. If he had a down year, he even, guys, look, he went and tried to be a professional baseball player. How did that work out? Not so good. So he had to come back to basketball. That's all right. You don't know if you don't try. And I, I love that about this book. I'm just all fired up, Mary Beth. I could go on and on and on. I'm, I had to stop myself after chapter three because I was, I, and then I went and downloaded the in, in the pit with a line on a snowy day just to do something else to distract me while I was waiting for us to get to four, five, and six or whatever is next. I love it. That's so awesome. And I love that quote too. I'm glad that you said that one about failure because everyone has failure. And I, Cammie, you sharing that I think is absolutely huge because everybody has gotten to see so much success of yours, but it just, and Michael Jordan, you know, everyone has it. It's what are you going to do with it? You know, what are you going to be able to stretch to in spite of it? How do you handle it? Um, and so I know we said 30 minutes and we got started a little late, but I'm, um, I'm going to get us off of here almost on time, but I've got four um, kind of action steps for you guys that I want to leave you with okay. um, at the end of this call. And I agree, Cami. I feel like we could talk for hours just on some of these concepts, but number one is I want you guys to journal a little bit. Um, just at least write down some of the inciting moments that he talks about that you've had in your life. Okay, so he did a whole little section on that. So moments that you think have kind of defined you, you know, and just think back, what are some of these moments that maybe where God started something in you, um, you know, dripped on you as far as being a business owner or being, you know, somebody who leads a strong family? Like, what are some of those things that God dripped on you in a positive way? And it can also be some things, maybe it was a negative experience or it was a failure or something that happened to you um, that also work to propel you into, you know, your new story and where God's taking you and some of the things he's stretching you to. So journal about some, just let yourself kind of soak in and think about some of those moments and what they have been in your life. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, I want you to journal about how you can be writing a better story with your life, business, personal, spiritual. And I just feel like too, if you, if you have uh, questions about the spiritual aspect, since we don't have a lot of time on here to talk about that, feel free to reach out to me personally on that stuff. Um, number three, I want you guys to read chapters four through seven. So it's going to be four chapters this week, but also you guys probably already figured out how quickly they go. You know, they're not long. Um, we want to make sure that we get through this together so that we can kind of all stay on the same page. And then lastly, I want you guys to comment with what really stood out to you um, with our time this week or with what you read this week. I'm going to put a post out on my wall on Facebook, um, and I want you guys to comment. I'll get that up as soon as we get off here. I want you guys to comment, um, and just, just so that we can encourage each other. I mean, we can encourage some other people in the business who maybe need this. We are recording, so we can... Um, we can save that for them and we want to make sure they're getting this book in their hands so that we can all be moving forward together, growing in leadership. So, okay. Yep. I will repeat the steps. So you're going to write some inciting moments. So things that really stood out to you throughout your life, think back, um, and write some of those down. Then you're going to think on, and you can write it out if you want, how you can write a better story with your life business, personal, spiritual. Okay. With those three things in mind, how you can write a better story with your life. And then number three was read chapters four through seven. And number four, you're going to comment your aha on my post that I'm getting ready to make. Hey, Mary Beth. Yeah. 
I just want to encourage everybody on this because I guarantee you know somebody that lives in your backyard that's doing this with us, have coffee or lunch with them this week. Don't let that be the last conversation you have about chapters one through three. Allow the Lord to not just plant that seed in your heart, but allow it to really start to, what do you call it, germinate? Is that the word? Oh, yeah, germinate it. Wow. I love um, that. But um, I feel like what a great opportunity to connect in a little bit of a different way and, and let it be about personal, let it be about spiritual and let it be about this book. I mean, what a neat way to really dig deeper, to take this to a whole nother level, right? Mark always says, we do it good. We do it excellent. But then we look at it and go, but how could it be an HNL? And so that's, I think, that's how I know I'm going to use it to take it to an HNL this week. I love that. I'm writing it down right now. So coffee talk coffee talk with somebody about some of these concepts and making sure you're bringing them up. Sometimes that does help when you talk about it. It really solidifies it in your mind too. So awesome. All right. I'm going to pray with us really quick. You guys, I just thank you so much for being on God. Thank you for this time that we've had and for just these wise words that we can read um, from somebody who has spent a lot of time learning you and chasing after big dreams. And I pray for each person on this call as they start to look back on their story, on their business on their personal life and on their spiritual life. God, I pray that you would give them just really amazing insight this week and that you would help us to grow our dreams bigger and make our stories better. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Yeah. This was awesome. Thank you guys for being on. All right, Mary, you can end the recording whenever you're ready. I gave you host to get back a little while ago. All right, sounds great, guys. I'll stop it. You guys have an awesome week. We'll meet you here next week.